In this video, we'll explore solving linear equations. Now, some general suggestions to help you out with solving linear equations. First, always check to see if you have any restrictions on the domain. So are there values that you plug in to say a fraction that the denominator becomes zero, or are you limited as to what values can be plugged in? Then you're actually gonna start working with the equation. You're gonna to try to simplify each side as much as possible. Maybe you have distribution. Maybe there's some terms that can be combined. Once you've done that, you're gonna start working on trying to simplify the overall equation by performing inverse operations to each side. The big thing you have to remember is that whatever you do to one side, you have to do identically to the other side. So if I add 15 to one side, I need to add 15 to the other side as well. You always wanna check your solutions to make sure they'll work and to make sure your solutions were not restricted within the domain. And the last thing is if you ever see that you end up having a problem where the variables cancel each other, uh, you're gonna have one of two solutions. Either it's going to be all real numbers where my left side equals my right side, it's identical, or my solution will be no solution. There's nothing I could plug in that would make that a true equation, and that's if my left and my right side are completely different. So let's look at some examples. Here's one example. I want to solve for 2x plus 9 equals 3 fourths times the quantity 8x minus 16. The first thing I want to do is simplify my expressions. Well, there's nothing left on the left-hand side, but on the right, I can distribute the 3 fourths. So if I do that, I end up with 6x minus 12 there. Now I have just the basic variables and constants. And I'm going to simplify. First, I'm going to add 12 to both sides. That cancels out my 12s right here, and I did it to both sides. So now I have 2x plus 21 equals 6x. Now I'm going to subtract my 2x from both sides to get my variables together. And then my last thing is I want to get this to 1x, so I divide by 4. Now that leaves me with a fraction of 21 fourths, and that's fine. If I could simplify the fraction, I would. But I always want to check my solution as well, to, one, to make sure there's no restrictions, and two, to make sure I solve the problem correctly. So let's plug it back in. So anywhere there's an x, I'm going to put 21 fourths. So now I simplify each expression. This becomes 21 halves plus 9, and then if I simplify inside parentheses, that becomes 42 minus 16. I'm going to add the 21 halves and the 9, and I'm going to do 42 minus 16. So I'm just simplifying like I would order of operations. And if I do my last operation here, 3 fourths of 26 is 39 halves. The left side equals the right side, so I know I solved my problem correctly. Let's look at another example. Here I have two fractions. And if I see my variables in the denominator, so I'd want to say, well, what could I plug into x that would make it become 0? because that would cause problems. I can't have a zero in my denominator. So the two values would be a positive three would make this one become zero, or if I plugged in negative one, this one becomes zero. So those are my two restrictions. Those two values cannot be x. So let's make sure that they aren't when I solve this equation. Now in this case, what I wanna do is I'm gonna end up cross multiplying. I wanna remove these fractions, and I can do it at the same time. So I end up with 4 times the quantity x plus 1 and 5 times the quantity x minus 3. Now I need to simplify each of those by distributing. So I distribute the 4 and I'm going to distribute the 5. Now I'm down to a multi-step equation. So I'm going to subtract the 4x from both sides and then I'm going to add 15. Now, I typically go about solving my equations to keep my x positive. You could have done it the other way. You could have subtracted 5x, subtracted 4, and then recognize you have negative x equals negative 19, so you have to divide both sides by negative 1. As whatever you end up with, you always want to make sure your final solution is a positive x. So now I check my solution. Well, first, 19 was not part of my restricted group. So I'm okay there. Now I'm gonna plug it in to make sure I solve my problem correctly. So if I plug in 19 minus three, that gives me 16. 19 plus one gives me 20. I simplify, 
that's one fourth equals one fourth. Again, I'm correct. So let's look at one last example of a real world example. So federal law requires that companies pay time and a half once you've worked past a 40 hour work week. If Sam was paid $750 for working eight, 48 hours, how much is Sam's hourly wage? Well, the first thing I need to recognize is what is my variable? My variable in this case would have to be the hourly wage. It's the one thing I don't know. I know how many hours I worked. I know how much I made or how much Sam made. So I just need to figure out well, what is the hourly wage? We also know as we set up the equation that there's two parts to this. There's the part, the 40 hours, and whatever that hourly wage is, and then there's the eight hours, which is that time and a half. So if I wanted to set that up as an equation, I'd have my 40 hours times my standard wage plus my eight hours at 1.5 times the wage, and that 1.5 is the time and a half. And we know all that has to add up to $750. Now, instead of using wage, I can plug in my variable x. So if I just simplify, that becomes 40x plus, well, 8 times 1 and a half is 12. So now all I have to do is continue to solve my equation. So 52x equals 750. Divide both sides by 52, and you get about 14 and 423 thousandths. But we're dealing with money and money rounds to the nearest cent or the nearest hundredth so we'd say that Sam made about fourteen dollars and forty two cents an hour